Hi, this is Scott Kilos here at 6 Delta Alpha Yankee, and for today's video, we're back with another Yaesu FT60 Operator Series video. And this particular video might be one of the most important videos in the entire series, uh, particularly for people that are new to the FT60s, but it, uh, it might actually help some people that have had an FT60 for a while and have had a common reoccurring problem with the radio that's caused them a lot of frustration. This is going to correct that for you. But what we're going to do today is we're going to turn off a feature that on paper should actually be a, a useful and convenient feature and an important feature of this radio if it worked properly. But unfortunately with the ASU FT60 it does not. And turning this feature off, like I said, is going to save you a ton of frustration moving forward. And it's an important step to carry out early on with the radio. In fact, if your radio is not brand new out of the box and you're watching this series for the very first time, this may be the time that you go ahead and, and do a full factory reset on your radio and start from the beginning in setting the radio up. Uh, and I, I think moving forward your radio may in fact work a whole lot better. And I'm going to demonstrate exactly what I'm talking about because it's better to understand by, by seeing it rather than me just telling you about it. But what we're going to turn off as a feature is automatic repeater shift. Now what automatic repeater shift is supposed to do if it works correctly is that from the VFO mode if you punch in a frequency that is associated with the range of frequencies set aside for repeater operations within that band this radio will automatically apply the relevant negative or positive offset to that selection and you can begin operating the repeater right away so really if it works right, all you need to know is the receive frequency for the repeater. Punch that in and it automatically drops the offsets in and you should be able to key down immediately and start operating that repeater. And if it works, then you can save it pretty efficiently into the, uh, into the memory system, name it, and you're good to go. So if it worked correctly, this would be an awesome thing, but it doesn't. That's the problem. I mean, it works, but the problem is it works too well. And the reason why I say it works too well is it does it does it a little bit in the VHF band, but where it's particularly bad is the UHF band. In the UHF band, if you punch in well any free pretty much any frequency within the U seventy centimeter UHF band, it automatically applies a plus or minus five megahertz offset immediately, and that would include simplex operations. So let's say, for instance, we wanted to go to the North American UHF 70 centimeter simplex calling frequency, a frequency that is set aside for nationwide simplex operations in the UHF band on 70 centimeter. That frequency is 446.000. I have it right here. And in this radio, it's actually labeled call 2, but it is the same. So this radio is set up correctly. So if I key down, everything works fine. So I have simplex communications and that is because automatic repeater shift on this radio has been turned off. But let me turn on automatic repeater shift and show you um, the problem that, that is presented here. So let's go to menu. We're going to FW and zero. We're going to go to item number four, which is automatic repeater shift. And then from there, let's go ahead and turn automatic repeater shift on. Now let's exit out. Now nothing changed, um, but what's going to happen is the moment I do anything to this radio, it's going to start applying automatic repeater shifts. So all I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to turn the channel selector knob one notch. Now watch what happens. I just turned it just a wee bit. Now that definitely is not the receive frequency for any repeater in the United States that I'm aware of. But you'll notice right away, just above the 446 here, you'll notice a minus symbol popped up. That is an offset direction indicator telling you that offset has been applied. So let's go back to 446.000, which again is not associated with repeater operations. And you'll see that offset indicator. Now watch what happens because I didn't turn this radio off. I didn't do anything except turn automatic repeater shift on. So now let's try to transmit and see what happens. So we transmitted just a moment ago, right? And note on the, the indicator here, note the change from 446 to 441 when I key down. And nothing. I can receive, but I can't send because when I transmit, it's applying 
a minus five megahertz offset to my transmission. So I'm transmitting on 441 and not 446. So it makes it impossible to use the thing for simplex operations. So if automatic repeater shift is turned on, you don't have control or access to your simplex range of frequencies. You can't use this thing on simplex. So it's a problem moving forward forevermore. So one would think, well, hey, I'll just turn automatic repeater shift off and go back to normal, right? Well, here's the real problem. So let's go back to menu and automatic repeater shift. Let's go here and let's turn automatic repeater shift off. And let's Let's make sure. Let's verify that. Okay, it's turned off, right? You see that. So, sex now. And it's still there. And when I key down, still doing 441. So it didn't turn it off. So let's put another simplex frequency in there. Let's go to 436. And it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter where you go in here. Uh, let's, let's do that. 441.025, which again is not going to be anybody's repeater frequency, and it should be 436.025. There you go, 436.025. So even though I've turned automatic repeater shift off, now I can't get rid of it because I turned it on at one point. Now for the life of the radio, this thing is going to continue doing this every time I try to do simplex operations within VHF 70 centimeter. So that is a problem. That is kind of a massive problem. So if and and it doesn't matter also if you use like a computer system to set up your radio. So if you go in and, and you set your radio up with Chirp or RT systems or whatever, you put all of your repeater frequencies in there. Um, and you may even go in and put your simplex frequencies in. And even like, and I've done this with Chirp. I've seen it happen time and time again. I'll go in and I'll notice that offsets have been applied automatically, even with Chirp. And I'll go in and I'll remove all of those. And I'll come back later and read the radio to the computer. And they're, they're back again. So it's a persistent problem moving forward. And the only way I've found to get rid of this and, and make this radio actually work the way it works is to completely, because once it's been turned on, the only way to get rid of it is to reset the radio and start over again. So that's why this is something you want to do very early on with this radio. You want to turn automatic repeater shift off and you want to leave it off for the life of the radio. Don't ever turn it on again. So what I'm going to do here to get rid of this, and I'll show you how you would do this, because whether it's two frequencies in here or, or 900, um, the, the problem is still going to be the same. So I'm going to have to do a factory reset on the radio. Now this is going to remove any programming that's on the radio, and I'm going to have to start over again. Once again, to remind you, this is why you want to do it at an early stage. But as a reminder, to reset the radio, I go to the Moni button, which is the one just beneath the PTT that has the little nipple point on it there. I'm going to hold that down while I turn the radio on. I'm then going to use my dial indicator and go to all RST, which is all reset. I'm going to short press FW, and it's going to reset the radio. So I'm now back to factory settings. I'm going to go to the set menu by pressing the FW and zero key. I'm going to go to item number four. First thing I'm going to do on this radio is go to item number four. I'm going to press FW. I'm going to go to off. Press FW again, and I'm going to double check that. And we have automatic repeater shift turned off. Now, I'll probably while I'm here, I'm going to turn that beep off because that annoys me. So let's turn that off real quick and exit out. Now, if I put in 446000, nothing popped up. I have nothing indicating any kind of an offset. Everything works fine. And it will work fine moving forward. So what does this mean in terms of, of programming repeaters from the front panel moving forward? So you no longer have automatic repeater shift turned on. How did, how did the world change for you? Well, it now operates pretty much the same way as every other HT operates from the front panel. Doesn't matter. Um, all you're going to have to do is add two steps to programming in a repeater. You're going to need to put the receive frequency in. You're going to need to then go in, and I will show you when we go to repeater programming. We'll do it on the basis that automatic repeater shift has been turned off. We'll go in and we'll select the offset direction, and we'll do the offset amount. It's not that difficult to do. It's not that time consuming. 
But the benefit you gain from that moving forward is that you don't ever have to worry again that when you switch into VFO mode and punch in a simplex frequency to talk to somebody simplex, you don't have to worry about offsets being applied to that and being unable to communicate with people. And again, this is mostly a problem in the UHF 70 centimeter band, but I will tell you I have seen this happen with VHF simplex frequencies as well. If there's a couple of them in there that it reads those as repeaters as well and applies an offset. So those you don't want those done there either. So this will benefit you more than it'll it'll mess you up. And besides, with a radio that has 999 memory channels on it, you're probably if you're program if you're going to fill that all up, you're going to do most of your repeater programming from either Chirp or RT systems or or whatever. Um, so it's it's not going to slow you down there. So I see this as a net positive across the board. It's going to it's going to outweigh any deficiencies in removing it. So um, again. Pay attention to that. Make sure you have automatic repeater shift turned off on your FT60 and do not ever, ever, ever turn it back on because as I will remind you, if you turn that thing back on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be persistent moving forward and you're never going to be able to turn it off again until you reset the radio. So uh, hopefully that made sense. If there's any issues or problems, please contact me in the comments section there. Uh, but I will... Uh, move on at this point and the next video will be actually talking about programming in some simplex memory channels and we'll get to those repeater memory channels and I already have most of that work set up anyway so um, these videos should drop today tomorrow and the next day they should drop in a tight time frame so it won't slow you guys down too much so with that I will thank you for listening or watching this is Scott Kilo Sierra 6 Delta Alpha Yankee from Visay, California have a wonderful day